Today I just want to show you something. Probably every military diesel owner, owner operator, captain, or mechanic, some tips that might be helpful. I put together a sea trout kit. This is uh, something basic, simple, and anybody can do it. Here we got a, a digital gauge with some little aluminum manifolds fittings, some little stainless steel valves, and this is what you need to troubleshoot your Detroit diesel. I want to show you, in this case, you don't have to have a fancy case like this. For many years I just used a bucket. Here's your hoses, test fittings that go into the engine. Some made up push lock hoses. This isn't high pressure. The gauge I have is just a 0 to uh, 100 psi. That's all you really need to check air box, turbo boost, exhaust back pressure. Um, every Detroit diesel put in any kind of boat, Hatteras's, Bertram's, Posts, Oceans, whatever it may be, custom boats. Detroit Diesel sells those engines and they have to perform a certain way. You always have to refer to your Bible. Detroit Diesel Field Service Manual or a spec sheet. This engine is, is made to perform in a certain way. It's made to have certain pressures, certain temperatures, etc. Every engine that's installed in a boat has to be tested, sea trial, sea trial data recorded and given to the factory, otherwise that engine is not under warranty. Get uh, warranty claims filled on any engine sold from Detroit Diesel. Startup inspection must be done and a sea trial must be performed with data recorded. So every boat out there has data from an original sea trial. When boat builders build a boat, they complete the boat, they bring the boat to the marina, they start the boat up in the water, the mechanic is present, he's got his gate or something, which is something similar to right, this right here. I worked for 30 years with a, a Detroit Diesel distributor that did startups out of Miami, to Bertrams, Black Fins, cust all the custom sport fishing boats on the Treasure Coast. And every Detroit Diesel boat had to have a startup inspection and sea trials completed. that I put together and this one I use for strictly fuel pressure. I made it in this nice nice little case. Actually got the watch for Christmas and I used the case good use put the case in good use. Here I have a liquid filled gauge and this this is the gauge and this is the manifold I use for checking fuel pressure. You can use it for other pressures but I use this for fuel pressure, and I'll tell you why. I don't like using the same manifold to check airbox, turbo boost, and fuel pressure. Because guess what could happen? Yeah, that's right. You don't want to get fuel pressure if you leave a, a valve open, and all of a sudden now you start bleeding fuel pressure into your airbox or into your turbo. Because that, that would make a disaster. So I always like to keep the fuel pressure separate from the rest of my manifold. Okay, we're back. Uh, we're in the office now. Uh, Marina kicked us out. Basically, the wind uh, just wasn't working with us. Anyway, we're back to our troubleshooting, Detroit Diesel style. And uh, I just want to bring to your attention, uh, every Detroit, uh, from the distributors or the dealers, they had to fill out this form for any new engines, whether JT, whether Covington, whether Key Power, uh, any of the boat builders, they had a, whenever they did an install, the Detroit diesel rep had to be there, sea trial the vessel, full gauge out sea trial, and even today, brand new engines, Detroit diesel does the same exact thing, only now it's on a computer. The only manual gauges that they need is uh, temperatures and um, also um, exhaust back pressures have to be tested with gauges. This, well, I'm going to tell you about why this is so simple. 
and you know this might this might look like hey this is a mechanic steel right here right you know the gauges the you know hand tachometer these these are important things but it's simple things that you should have on your boat not a bad idea to have on your boat um, for the simple reason if you have a problem it can be easily solved or easily figured out a sea trial without gauges is not a sea trial it's a boat ride so if you get you know for this is for the boat owners your boat owner if you you know you call the mechanic out to the boat you tell them you're having a problem and uh you know the boat mechanic comes out to the boat and says oh let's see what the problem is starts it up everything looks fine maybe he does this maybe he checks this checks that says okay let's go for a boat ride I'm not sure I'm not sure what good that is I I, I know that as long as I've been in the business if uh, you know working for the uh, factory distributor if we had a complaint with a boat performance issue smoke issue uh, low speed issue low power issue whatever that issue may be if we did not hook up gauges it wasn't a sea trial and I don't see how the customer would even want to pay a bill I mean, how do you hand a customer a bill, you know, saying, you know, at the end of your ride, say, well, it could be this, it could be that, and maybe, maybe we need to change your injectors. That maybe's, I mean, I don't understand how a maybe or possibly or guessing, you know, is going to get somebody paid. So, and let me let me tell you, and I know I, I'm going to make this as quick as I can. Uh, I'll tell you a little story really quick. Um, why do you need gauges? Went to Puerto Rico once. Do a survey for a guy in a, a Hatteras motor yacht, 1271s. And while I was there, a um, factory representative was there, and because the same owner of the Hatteras had a brand new Blackfin 38 with uh, 692s. The dealership in Puerto Rico had been working on the boat, and it, to the point where the factory representative had to fly to Puerto Rico to find out what was going on because this. They were putting all this money into the boat. It was under warranty, and they couldn't figure out the problem. It had a smoke problem. Black smoke, low power, uh, low speed. So uh, I'm there doing a survey. I got my gauges, <clears throat> and uh, the factory rep comes to me and says, look, they've cleaned the aftercoolers. They've changed all the injectors. They've done this. They've done that. All this long list of money went into this boat. Black fins. I, I, I've done startups on black fins for years. I said, sure, no problem. I said, let me hook up some gauges. Let me check a few things. We'll take it off for a sea trial. I hook up my gauges, went on a sea trial, uh, came back, came back to, you know, uh, captain says, uh, you done? I said, I'm finished. I, I got what I need. Come back to the dock. Uh, factory rep says, what do you think? I said, he's overloaded. I said, the boat's overloaded. I don't know if the bottom's dirty or if the props or whatever it is, but it's overloaded either way. <clears throat> Boat owner comes out to the dock and he comes up. He said, what do you, what'd you find? I said, it's overloaded. He says, no, there's no way. I said, he, he said, it's the original props. He goes, the bottom's clean. I had a diver came down. I, sw I swam under the boat myself. I verified the, the, the bottom's clean. I said, sir, I said, I'm telling you, I'm saying what the gauges said. Gauges said, boat's overloaded. <clears throat> Factory rep says, I'm going to tell you what I'll do, sir. He says, let's take the boat. Let's take it over and get it hauled out. If the bottom's fine, I'll pay for the haul out. If the bottom's not fine, you pay for it. Owner agreed. We jumped on the boat. We went around the island, hauled the boat out. The bottom was fouled. The guy cleaned the bottom, had the props, you know, cleaned up and all that stuff. And here's the thing. Gauges do not lie. Ga gauges are going to tell you exactly what you need to know on how an engine's running, performing. And here's the thing. You know, these new boats back in the day, they, you know, the dealership, the boat builder would build the boat. The boat would go to a dealership. They'd, the dealership wouldn't fill that thing up with, you know, 3,000 gallons of fuel. They're not going to do it. They don't, they're not going to put that kind of money in it to sell the boat. So the owner takes that boat with empty tanks or half full tanks or quarter full tanks. The boat performs great. It runs great. Well, now they get the boat. They fill it up with fuel. They put their gear on it. And now the boat, instead of doing 2350, it's down to 2300 with a nice brand new bottom. Well, a year later, now it's down to 2250, 2275, and it, you know, and it's starting to smoke a little bit. What's the problem here? You know, well, I don't know. I don't know. Let's 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 put a post on Facebook and see if we can get the mechanics to figure it out. And man, here comes the, here comes all the answers. It's got to be this, 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 and there's going to be a long list. Bottom line is, gauges are not going to lie. 
here's the thing, and I've seen this on, on Facebook as well. I've seen guys, you know, they take their engines out of the boat for an overhaul. A company overhauls them. They dyno test them. I've seen the engines running on the dyno. They're doing great. They're performing like they should. Everything's perfect. They take those engines. They put them back in the boat. They go for a sea trial. Hey, everybody's great. Everybody's happy, right? Now, what happens if, like, they get the boat, you know, engines that they just dynoed, put it in the boat. Well, hey, look, it's smoking. It's really not turning up. What's the problem? Well, let's see. Because we know what it did on the dyno under the load. Let's see what it's doing under this load. Well, what we can see is it's not turning up to 2350 or 2500 or whatever it should. It's, it's 100 RPMs down. Well, why is it 100 RPMs down? Well, the same turbo boost and airbox pressure that you had at full load which was the right pressures. Now you're getting that same pressure at 2100. Well, if you're getting that same pressure that you should have at full load at 2100, you're overloaded. And it's gonna tell you how much that you need to adjust. It's gonna tell you how much you need to adjust your props. If, if you don't use gauges, you're really just gonna be guessing at it. And believe me, I know props are, are a little bit too expensive to be guessing at, uh, you know, taking pitch out, taking size off, diameter off a prop, because you don't wanna ruin a set of props, they're too expensive. Okay, your engines, so they do have a template when they do a, when a sea trial is done, okay? And if they don't have a template, if you don't have a, a sea trial sheet for your boat, your engines, make one. And this is how you make one. You, you at, whenever it is you're going to haul your boat out of the water and clean your bottom, repaint the bottom, you know, clean your props, do that, clean your props, service your engines, put new filters on it, all that stuff there, and then... You know what? You make a simple little gauge like this. It's a few hundred dollars. It's not a big deal. It's something that you'll always have. And uh, I used to just, you know, sit on a bucket, put, hook up my gauges. And, and a lot of times when people do sea trials on a boat, like I did from the factory, I would always leave the test fittings in the engine, just put little caps on the fittings. So the next guy, when he comes to, you know, troubleshoot, that's all he's got to do is take that cap off, stick a hose on there. And that's, and that's what I would do. I would sit on my bucket. I would run my hose from my airbox, from my turbo boost to my gauge, hang my gauge somewhere in the front of the engine room, right there by the front of the engine. I got my tape, my tachometer tape on the crankshaft. And I'm, you know, reading RPMs. And I'm making sure that when I tell him 1,200, and there's a standard for Detroit, 1,200, 1,600, 1,900, 2,100, and then full load. It's always the same. That's the, that's the standard for Detroit Diesel. So as I'm telling him 1,200, I'm checking, I'm checking to see if his RPMs are correct with his gauges up on top. Well, I tell him 1,200, he's at 1,400. That right there is telling me there's a problem. Okay, his gauges aren't right. He's not reading right. So that could be the whole problem right there. <clears throat> that's just one little thing. However, anyways, that's what I would do. Sit in between the engines, read my gauges, read my airbox, read my turbo boost at the certain RPMs. When I'm done, I got my readings, I got my numbers, all I have to do is go to the book. The book, it'll tell you. At 671, at 2100, should have this much airbox pressure. Should have this much uh, airbox pressure. Head Should have this much turbo boost pressure. Should have this much fuel pressure. Everything's written. Everything's written. Everything you should have a template when, uh, for your own boat. And if you have a template for your own boat, someday when you do have problems, you just pull out your template. You say, hey, last time I ran at 2100, I had... 20 pounds of uh, airbox pressure. This time, I've got 27 pounds of airbox pressure at 2100. Well, that's telling me, you know what that's telling me? You got something on your prop. You got something on the bottom of the boat that's holding that prop back. My speed's down. Why is your speed down? Let's take a look. Well, your airbox pressure's higher at a certain RPM, and my boat speed's down. What does that tell you? Something's going on, and it's load-related. Okay, Temperatures, the same thing with temperatures. My temperatures, all of a sudden, I'm, my, my temperatures, I'm down in South Florida, and uh, my temperatures are running, you know, 180, 185. At, you know, and I'm not, I don't push the boat. I only do 2,000 RPMs max. And I'm running 185, close to 190. Well, you know what? <clears throat> Chances are you're probably overloaded. And it doesn't matter if you're, if you don't run the boat at full load, if you're, if you're not able to achieve 2350 because you can't make it there because of load, you're going to be overloaded at 
1200. You're going to be overloaded at 1600, 1900. At 1900, your airbox pressures, your turbo boost pressures, everything is going to be way high for that RPM. And you're not going to be anywhere in your, your torque and your horsepower range for that same RPM. <clears throat> there's there's a, a certain table that you should be within that table. And when you're overloaded, if you're overloaded at the top, you're going to be overloaded across the whole board. <clears throat> and I can, I can actually... Okay, here's a good thing to do. When your bottom is clean, when you want to do make a you want to make a your own vessels template, <clears throat> this is how this is what you start off with. You record your tank volumes. How big are my fuel tanks? How full are they? And it's always good to keep your fuel tanks full. That that keeps your fuel clean, doesn't give any room for algae. Um, your prop size, you want to record your, your prop size, your boat, your boat speeds at the at the same RPM ranges. Record your speeds at 1,200, 16, 19, 21, and full load. This is done at the factory. This is done when your engines were new. This is something you should have for your own template. Okay, what are some Detroit diesel engine killers? Number one, overload. Number two, exhaust soot. If you got exhaust leaks in your engine room, it's a killer. You want to, you want to get rid of them quick. Uh, and overload, that's another thing. If you're, if you're only getting 2,250, you know, 2200, somewhere between 2200, 2250, you're going to notice in the horizon behind the boat, you're going to see a haze. That that haze is exhaust soot, and your engines are going to be sucking that back in and eating it. Whether you can see it or not, it's going to be happening. So that means dirty intercoolers, dirty aftercoolers, and it tears up the cylinder kits. Okay, fuel problems. That's another engine killer. Why fuel problems? Water in the fuel, algae. That kind of thing and you don't want to use fuel additives not recommended by the factory cause injector problems fuel additives can cause injector problems uh, LG can cause injector problems water can cause injector problems I mean these are things that can happen that you want to watch out for anyway it's a tech tip it's something that's not overly complicated uh, if you're a mechanic if you work at a shop this is this is something that you can put together relatively cheap. You keep this in your toolkit. This is just as important as having a set of wrenches. I mean, if you don't have a set of gauges like this and you go on a sea trial, to me, I don't, I don't see how you could, uh, how you're making it in the business. So anyway, if you're a mechanic, there's your gauges. If you're a captain, you might want to have something like this on board for uh, reference, so you can troubleshoot it yourself if you, if you think possible. I'm going to do another video uh, when I can, when I find somebody who's got an engine that's available, and uh, I'll show you where to hook up if it's if there isn't hookups there, where to hook up, how to hook up, and then uh, what to look for on an engine. So for now, I hope that helps. Like my video. <laughs>